Here are the 2024 Toyota RAV4s. This is an LE, this is an XLE. Magnetic gray pearl is the exterior for the XLE. LE gets the ice cap. What is the difference? Is the two, three grand worth the difference? I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. In the front, you're not gonna notice any difference. Standard adaptive LED headlights and daytime runnings, the same grille pattern and the same clearance at 8.4 inches. Going up the tier can max at 8.6 inches and going into the TRD will change the suspension because it's tuned by TRD. The big difference starts with the wheels. LE is getting these 17 inch steel wheel covers, but you can option 17 inch alloy wheels, which would be the same as the XLE. But then when you're paying that extra premium, there's still more features that I haven't even entertained. The side view mirror doesn't get the turn signal integrated. You have to go to the XLE and then you're also noticing it's a matte black. When you go to the XLE, it's the same color key. Optioning the package to change out the wheels will give you a key fob in which it's a push button start instead of a key, which you'll see on the interior. The XLE gets standard 17 inch five spoke gray alloy wheels. The Adventure is going to get 19 inch alloy wheels. The TRD will get 18 inch matte black alloy wheels and 19 inch goes into the limited and it's a different color. Both will option the same engine underneath the hood, which is a 2.5 liter four cylinder. Now it's a bit of a sleeper because you're getting 203 horsepower with 184 pound feet of torque, both paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, which when you're thinking about rivals like Honda, everybody brings into the category. That's a CVT transmission. You're not gonna have to worry about it here. Do you need to option a hybrid? You're still getting 27 MPGs for the city and 35 MPGs for the highways. The Adventure Start Standard all-wheel drive, going all the way up to the Limited in which now you can go back to a front-wheel drive variant. The difference between that is you're increasing towing to 3,500 pounds, whereas the front wheel drive is at 1,500 pounds. But then you're decreasing the payload to 1,100 pounds, whereas this is over 1,200 pounds. Matte black is going to be surrounding the lower skirt and the fenders that layer out. This year, they will option a army green for the Adventure in the TRD off-road, an optional two-tone, which will make it look a little bit more off-roadsy. That's kind of what you're looking to receive. Standard LED tail lights, and the lower gets the same exhaust setup, which keeps a sporty style, so you don't have to go five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 more in getting a Mazda going into the turbo, so that way you get that performance drive. You're gonna get the look, but the sleeper feel and sipping fuel, so the blend-in kind of works out decent and you're getting some upgrades and options. Both vehicles you can option packages, which you will not be able to do that when you go into Honda. When you get into the XLE, you can option the power lift gate. The LE does not have that option. Going up the tier will get a kick to open tailgate. Going into 39.4 cubic feet of storage. 12 volt charger comes in the XLE. You get a storage pocket underneath the floor it's a spare tire and you can configure this down about two to three inches, which will give you more top to bottom cargo capacity. Split fold the rear bench in the back. If you're tall like me, at a 60-40 split, that will max cargo at 59 cubic feet. We need to go inside, start up this bad boy so you can hear that exhaust on. The interior is going to be different. The LE is going to have manual seat adjustment for both the passenger and driver, whereas the XLE will get eight-way power seat adjustment, optional heated seats. The premium will have soft tech seats. Inside, both of them are going to have the eight-inch infotainment screen. Dual climate control settings will be on the XLE, where it's a single climate control setting. Both will also have the storage and the same look for the dashboard. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, and it is wireless Apple CarPlay. Both will have the standard setup for the speakers, so you get six speakers. If you get into the premium, you can option the 11 speaker JBL audio sound system and a touchscreen infotainment. Putting into reverse, both will have the trajectory that will expand out and you can both change the image. 
Working down, a wireless charging pad will be optional on the XLE. Both will have the three driving modes and a little storage pocket here. It's going to be more soft. That opens up into a deep storage pocket, both getting two USB ports and the same steering wheel setup that's multi-function with the same gauge cluster. That's a seven inch digital reader that can go through an array of information. Another big change from the LE to the XLE. We don't have a moonroof here but the XLE will get it. The door is going to be the same as the LE. Soft materials, one touch up and down for the windows and a medium sized storage pocket. For the back seat, headroom and leg room, both will get a storage, both will get storage beyond the passenger seat, air vents, except the XLE gets two USB ports, whereas the LE gets a 12 volt Cup holders and armrests, and the door is going to have the same materials on both with a smaller storage pocket sliding into the center. It's going to be the same with feet, shoulder, and butt space. You will be sharing a little bit, but it's still pretty decent for the width and the height of the vehicle. Headroom is not going to be a problem for anyone over six foot tall. 203 horsepower is gonna be standard on all. Here we go. and that's back with 184 pound-feet of torque. Is the LE worth saving two, three grand going into the XLE? For me, no, because I'm getting power seat adjustment right off the top. I'm getting extra charging ports in the back, which if you have kids, most of them don't use a 12 volt nowadays. Both of them are going to have the same storage in the doors, and both of them are going to be a little bit more firm where you're resting your arms a little bit more towards the sporty side. The good thing about these vehicles is they sip fuel and you can still move around. And that's because it's not so wide or not so long, but the interior still is wide. You still have enough room when you're going on a long journey to not feel cramped. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons and starting with the pros about the vehicle, it has an eight speed automatic transmission. You can option a hybrid if you need more fuel. If you need to save more fuel, but for me, I would just option the gas variant, save the dough, put it onto the XLE Premium. Because when you're spending that extra money, what you're getting is options for the power lift gate, wheels, charging ports. There's just a lot more pros going on when I get into the XLE. The sweet spot though, like I was saying on the exterior is really, a I don't know why they offer an XLE Premium because you're getting just a few extra touches, but you're still not unlocking 3,500 pounds of towings, which is the big problem that I have because you have so many trims and yet you can still option so many features, which is a good thing. However, make it a little bit less trims and keep the options. Some other pros about the vehicle is that you still have more towing and payload capacity than most of the rivals at a front wheel drive vehicle. Comfort to the vehicle is not bad. Steering is going to have a little bit of weight. The Honda is going to be a little bit more artificial. The seat to the Honda is going to be a little bit more wide. And also in the back seats, you're going to have your legs sitting up a little bit more so, whereas when you're in the Honda, it's going to be a little bit more of a wider seat cushion also. Motivation for a day in and day out use, I will say it's going to be more of a two to three RPM hitting and then going higher whenever you have to actually maneuver in and out of traffic, which you're going to have that even when you go into Honda. Mazda will be kind of the sweet spot in the comparison because you can option a turbo charge. The big problem that I have with the RAV4 is if you're not familiar with the trims, you can lose in towing and payload. Plus, because the trims are so close in price it doesn't make sense to option the vehicle it's more inexpensive to go up the tier so why would you pay an extra grand or two to get a push button start whereas you can do that going into the xle but let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing check out the next video merchandise website and instagram leave a comment and a like and i'd like to thank ghetto stadium toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota RAV4, LE, and XLE for our comparison review.